You dead. They cut the con cord. Bring out your dead. It's over. <laughs> Bring out your dead. Uh, so, <laughs> what was it? The day after, or two days after the the recording of last week's episode, um, con cord has been officially shut down. Or is about to be one of those two. Uh, they did not make it until the end of the year. <laughs> oh my God. I think this might. So we were talking about the worst flop in gaming history. I think this might be it now. Uh, it's eight years of development, which I keep seeing articles and then people just asking, what were they doing? Everybody's asking what were they doing for eight fucking years. They were eight years late to the Overwatch party. So I'm going to prompt you with the question. As someone, who, yeah. as somebody that does not play these sort of games, what made you disinterested singularly, meaning a single thing that made you most disinterested about this game? So you wouldn't have played it regardless of what happened, but... Oh, no, that's a fact. <laughs> uh, so I it mean, was a slam the, dunk. Then what? The e- <clears throat> if it was, if, if it was good, it, it, prompt the question. <laughs> yeah, so, it, so imagine the game. Well, let's not say good. Imagine the game just, you know, it didn't cancel. It was probably doing the same numbers as it was now, but. Uh, it, it was alive. What what would be disinteresting to you the most about this game? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the easy one for me is I don't play a lot of PvP games, so that's innately there. Uh, a close second is the designs as we've gone over. How you just look at the 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 roster and your eyes just glaze over from every single design except the cylindrical robot and that's not saying much that a big yellow barrel like robot has more character than any of the other cast so the third would definitely be uh the the player <laughs> the player numbers by fucking far okay that's a good one uh do you subscribe to the idea that a game success on PC is largely dependent on what people are seeing on the Steam count, i.e. the Steam number. So we have observed the same phenomena in the finals where people are already calling the game dead, even though it had, <laughs> I think it's at the time the- people were <laughs> crying wolf about it. It had 20k players. They were calling the game dead like, like seven months ago. It had 20k players. I, I don't know how it's doing now. I, I don't know. Uh, I think a few thousand last I checked. So like not terrible, but it's certainly, I mean, it's still going. It's certainly not dead, but. It ain't no Concord. Nope. <laughs> Nothing can be a Concord to that level. Like Sony backing it. Eight years of development. I can't stress that enough because what were they doing for eight years? And then the, the weekly like story cinematic updates, the really expensive mocap story cinematic updates for the multiplayer game that while sounded interesting, Oh, you come back every week and there's a new little like story bit. And I just wonder at what point one, how long would they be Two, when would they just become like, Oh, we ran out of time. Here's like, one that's really shitty. <laughs> it is a good point. Arrowhead had planned and promised a new war bond 
i.e. season pass, every second Thursday of the month. And because that game is in damage control mode, we are suddenly Helldivers, for the record. no longer doing that within Helldivers 2. <clears throat> so I, I feel like that's too often, honestly. So I wonder, yeah, how, how, how would you keep to that schedule? I think Sony... Uh, and I think this is just... <coughs> People that you know may or may not play games, they're they're just out of touch with general gaming audiences. Uh, <laughs> you in, don't say. <laughs> in, internally, it was reported that everybody within Sony was really loving this game, and that's why they uh, put so much stock into it. And uh, I, I think that only grew with time. That oh, they thought oh, this is going to be a home run. We're about to see that with another game. Uh, plan for release that's going to be another live service whatever whatever but uh it, what, what, let's see how, how many live services are we in now so like eight nine out of there way too many i i know i sent you a list uh earlier in the week um and i also sent you an article saying that uh sony currently despite eight years of development time in several many at least at least a hundred million dollars went into Concord to die. <laughs> they, they stood it up and then they blew its brains out in one fell swoop. Sony is unfazed by Concord's immediate demise, and they're looking forward to uh, Fair Games, which I don't know if you remember that game, but it was announced last May, and I can barely recall the trailer. I rewatched it. And I was sitting there thinking, I think I remember this. I think I remember people saying it reminded them of Watch Dogs and that's about it. Uh So here we go with another fucking live service game. Probably won't die as quickly as Concord, but oh boy. (laughs) The The designs look better in it. I I can't remember the trailer, but I remember the essence was you're in a heist. That's what, yeah. They're just looting a or raiding a bank vault. So there's a bunch of tech. It, 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 it's understandable why pe- people just went for like, oh, watchdogs. Because just like the techie stuff included in it. So, yeah, basically we're, we're up to eight. So we got The Last of Us Online, which was canceled. Uh, whatever London Studios was <laughs> working goodness. on, which was some sort of fantasy, something or other that got canned. Deviation Games had a title they were working on that got canned. Horizon Online, I don't know how that's doing. Concord, we know how that ended. I didn't even hear about Horizon Online. Like, I know I sent you the list, but like after the fact, I, I didn't hear about that. Fair Games, which it, it may be a fair game. Who knows? We haven't really seen anything, and I think that's kind of smart on their end because I think people, as you say, they had their eyes glaze over when they were watching the trailer and then seeing the devs go, it's going to be a 5v5 hero shooter. Oh, we're going to no, have a base thing. combat. Here's the thing. I can't fucking remember. I didn't even remember Fair Games. Also, awful name. Terrible name. The fact that I couldn't even remember the fucking game existed. And I'm looking at like, what is this? I don't think that's a good sign either. Like not like not not showing anything, but show something. Remind people the game exists because I fucking forgot it did. Uh, but sure, you can say you know one thing like oh I'm not, Mal is not going to play it anyway. Like sure, and while that's true, I still forgot it existed. <laughs> uh, Fair Games uh, reportedly going to be a PvP something. So I'm. I, I'm just going to throw it out there. I think this is either going to be an arena shooter or an extraction shooter. They said it's a uh, extraction shooter. Damn. Yep. Another one. Damn. Another one. <laughs> That's the other. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, it was an extraction shooter. Reportedly. <laughs> Quote unquote. All right. Well, <laughs> call the, it's over. Call the mortician, I guess. Bring out your dead. <laughs> Again. Marathon, Next year, maybe. which we all know is <laughs> having a rough go of it right now. If internal testing is anything to go off of. And it's I, I know, man, I know this is your company. This is your tribe. And you feel like you were married up to this tribe. 
it sucks when the company that you, uh, and I guess admire, I'll, I'll throw that out there. Why not? The company that you admire because they made games that you've loved in your childhood are working on other projects and you want to see them succeed. And I understand that, but it's the internal testing guys. It's the internal test. <laughs> this isn't some reviewer. I copy. love it because I made it. <laughs> this isn't some reviewer copy that got handed out and the reviewers are saying, Oh, this is going to be bad news. No, th- these are people that Bungie invited personally to, to say like, Hey, try out the game, see what you like. Let's ha- let's have a focus group and talk about these things. Nobody's talking about this. Nobody wants to talk about this game. Not because they're under NDA. No, because they don't like the game. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, marathon, I don't know. I'm assuming it's going to have the same Bungie DNA gameplay that, that we even saw in Concord because there was a fair few Bungie devs in that game. And well, I don't, I don't think the Bungie DNA is, uh, it, it was hurting Concord. It was more to do with just the marketing, the characters, how off base they thought fans were going to enjoy this. And it, it didn't really seem like it was going to have licks to stand on post release. Uh, the last game, and Sony's arsenal is Helldivers, which is a anomaly in and of itself. And it's not even Sony screwing up aside from the, uh, what was it, 118, you know, countries that couldn't, uh, you know, sign on to their network anymore. Yeah, yeah, because they, because they couldn't make uh, uh, Sony accounts after, after to connect. After that, that, that really started hurting the game. And then people were like, yeah, you know, I think I'll... I'll take a break because everybody was reaching, uh, you know, max level or near max and unlocking most of their stuff at that point in the game or un- have unlocked yeah. everything. So people are like, ah, you know what, I'll, I'll just step back for a bit. And the next update comes out, ah, you know, it's more of the same, all right, whatever. And then uh, the people that, that are like diehard about the game, they have their stuff to say about the game because it's like, well, all right, guys, we've been here for five, four months now. Uh, where's where's the rest of the game? Um, <laughs> during the time of this recording, Space Marines Two would have been in three days early access. It's going to launch tomorrow as of this recording. Oh hallelujah! The uh, it, the way this ties into Hell Divers is that. They started teasing the Illuminates, which was the third faction we've been waiting on as far back as the uh, first month of release. I feel like they've been teasing those since like we've, <laughs> earlier in the year, though. We've assumed that they were going to release based off of player sentiment feedback and uh, just the way that the devs were acting around, uh, in quotes, leaks at the time. But... Uh, during the early access of Space Marine 2's uh, launch, we'll say, the, um, the war table inside of Helldivers 2 started showing that the Illuminates are on the map. And then they quickly take those uh, tiles away from the map. So everybody was like, oh, the Illuminates might actually be here. They, they are not. Oh my god. But, <laughs> oh my god, aliens, no way. <laughs> we'll see what happens in this week. It's, it, it's random to tease them. The same thing happened with the uh, the mechs. It's random to tease them a week before, and then all of a sudden, hey guys, here's the here's the brand spanking new operation to unlock said mechs. I, I just think uh, that the strategy of like live service is crazy, and the fact that you know this is a triple a company doing this like this is a major brand publisher doing this this isn't just like the usual riffraff that you'd expect like ea to you no know, this is like the like the big the big three between nintendo microsoft and then sony and then sony's just like yeah no we're gonna go all in on the strategy here and uh <coughs> so far they've paid the piper on literally every single one of these ideas aside from hell divers which wasn't even their idea uh, it's just crazy that they're unfazed, completely unfazed. <laughs> if Fair Games is anything to go off of internally. Or at least they're showing a front that like, no, we're not actually worried and they're fucking sweating. <laughs> internally, they're loving Fair Games. They might have uh, never played an extraction shooter before that because the, the big extraction shooter that you'd have access to would have been Tarkov. And that Tarkov has a huge barrier to entry in terms of its its 
skill gap and skill ceiling. Uh, so I don't know, maybe they thought making an extraction shooter, two of them, no less, um, would mean that the barrier for entry wouldn't be as high and people can play something that's more casual. But I just don't, I, I don't see two of these back to back doing well, plus being a live service. No, <laughs> no. not to mention they're again, late on the trend. And we're going to find out that fair games has been in development for <laughs> when did Tarkov release? <laughs> I mean, come the fuck on. What were they doing for eight years? <laughs> that's, just, that's just the way it goes, man. Um, you hear about these games that have taken like a long time to be <laughs> incubated. Uh, Diablo 4 was one such example. And Diablo 4 incubated for uh, damn near almost a decade, let's say, uh, especially because of COVID. So then that pushed it back. It was supposed to actually release in 2020. So that didn't happen. Got it last year and people were really loving it, but then they were messing around with the patches too much and nerfing things. They didn't really have time to like digest feedback. It was like, okay, this is the launch. This is the best game we've ever sold at this point, better than call of duty, which they at, at that point owned. Uh, but then a new game comes out by the name of uh, Last Epoch, which has been in development since COVID as a competitor to, at the time, Diablo 3 and Path of Exile. And Last Epoch, being developed by such a small team, has so many more features than Diablo 4. The ability to actually control summon units so that they're actually attacking the thing you want to attack. Uh, Diablo 4 couldn't do that. Path of Exile started doing that. Like a game way older than Diablo 4, obviously. So it's just... Uh, it's kind of awkward that, you know, you start incubating on projects and you, you think you're doing everything that you can during that current year of development and then the games industry just keeps moving and it keeps moving yeah. and then you, you get close to release and then it's like, okay, I wish our game did that. The ability to control your summons. Oh, that would have been a nice to have. Oh, the ability to just respect wherever you want. Oh, well, <sighs> yeah, we'll get them next time. I mean, time. look at, a look at, a like, you know, souls likes at this point, how, however the hell you would even categorize that. Uh, look at souls likes where it's like, Oh, you know, dark souls and then dark souls two and then dark souls three. And then everybody started making, you know, quote unquote souls likes, and now we've gotten to the point, uh, I would even say slightly before Elden Ring's initial release, like over two years ago, that people are just getting real fucking tired of Souls likes. Because like, not that the trend is dead or anything or the genre is dead, but it's just a fatigue because no. it's just constant. Every turn that you see is another Souls like. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a good way to put it is genre fatigue uh yeah i mean people are pushing back on call of duty at this point because it, it feels so i said it during a live stream the other night but the it, it feels like it lost identity because everything has to fit the the war zone mode or uh, mold rather so each mode of a call of duty segment whether that's zombies uh co-op it, it all plays similarly to that of warzone which is at, at its core not even a call of duty thing it's a free-to-play thing they offhandedly designed um and then it's watching cod next uh, last week i was watching the zombies gameplay and i it, that's that was like one of the things i was looking forward to because they they really emphasized that oh this is going back to round based zombies because the last game didn't have that modern warfare which modern warfare is not even supposed to have zombies but <laughs> there you go modern zombies but um you're watching the showcase and then you're like man zombies has lost a lot of its identity like it it, it looks like warzone it's just that you threw the zombies on the map the map itself looks like this is going <laughs> to be ending up in in the warzone mode it seems like you gave us like a small pocket of this map and well, it, to hell with everything else. All rivers lead back to Warzone. Uh, 
even the multiplayer looks it, it looks fun i don't think warzone uh whatever the, the iteration is uh I, I don't know what version we're at because i don't play it but i'm pretty sure whatever the the warzone release will be for uh Black Ops 6 is not going to feature the, the Omni movement, but it looks kind of fun. But the thing is, is that it just looks like Warzone, aside from the movement system. So it's, like it's, it's hard when the game that you release year to year, even though the studios themselves take five years to release these games. So there's, remember, there's three of them working on these. Uh, Wait, there's three of them now? Wait, there's Treyarch? Yeah, Treyarch. There's Act, Activision. Or, Infinity right? Ward. Oh, right. And then you have Sledgehammer. So Sledgehammer would have been the guys responsible for uh, Cold War initially. They were let go from that oh. project to, to work on whatever they actually wanted to work on. They were they, Sledgehammer is more uh, the, the guys that like to experiment. So Advanced Warfare uh, would, would have been Cold War. And now they're mm. working on whatever they're working on i'm assuming that's going to be the next uh, release after black ops and then whatever infinity ward works on after that so there's three of them doing this and it's you know annual but i thought when call of duty 2019 came out because remember that was like a soft reboot of the franchise everything looked yeah. really fresh the animations looked really good they were hand-drawn animations and they were working with uh operators on like how do you actually reload what, what's the thought process when you reload how are you inspecting the weapon all of that looked really neat the soundscapes looked like really good even the environments looked really good like we thought oh man this is this this new era of call of duty is going to be good and then literally the game after it, it seemed to all just go downhill because everything is centered around this war zone mode that was never supposed to actually release um it's just awkward and i think i think it goes back to just like people are getting fatigued so you're getting a lot more pushback yeah. on things like call of duty because it's like dude i'm looking at the same game basically like i let's let's move on remember uh modern warfare came out and after modern warfare like hey guys we got this black ops or sorry modern warfare 2 but then hey guys we got this black ops but then hey guys we have this uh was it ghosts that came after but you know, the, I I am so far removed from Call of Duty at this point. I I think the last one I played was uh, the zombies mode for Black Ops Two. I think. And then even then, Black Ops Two released, and all of those games looked different to each other. None of those games really looked the you know the same. They all had their own identity and, and core aesthetic to them. Black Ops looked more. Yeah. Uh, it it just looked more gritty than escapes of modern warfare too and then so on and so forth they all had their own uh, you know look yeah uh, but even it, it, you even look at a uh, world at war even world at war yeah or, or i mean shit you look at a uh, you know finest hour even then um but you know in the, in the 2019 reboot of the franchises it's just like everything looks exactly the same as the previous game so it, it gets tiring after a while and I think people are really pushing against that. Uh, I, I don't. I don't really know what Call of Duty can do aside from. I mean, it's it's the only FPS that we know of that does something to this scale where it's like, yeah, we're doing a yearly release like we're Madden. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just. I, I don't get it. <laughs> To, to bring it back, uh, back to Sony, though, you know what game is doing good from them, however? Mm-hmm. Astro Bot. Yes. So that much. is doing really good. That that released, uh, was it was it uh, a few days or, or, or no, just uh, the other day, actually, uh, just released. Yeah. And that is doing a single player, just Sony shill house <laughs> game is doing infinitely better than the thing that was spent eight years on, which is crazy. <laughs> uh, Astrobot is doing so well at the moment that people are asking this game to be on other platforms right now. Like there is a demand for this game outside of be I being a Sony game. I see PC, but then, you know, you need your Sony account to actually play it. I could see PC and uh, that'd probably be it. 
Like it, it is a, like they have God of war in the game. They have a lot of old titles that are referenced. They have, uh, that one, uh, that one about, uh, I think it's about like a group of hunters or something and they're in a city and they're hunting like werewolves or something. I, I can't tell you what that could even be. No. But they have that referenced in it. They have Days Gone referenced in it. <laughs> you know, Days Gone is so crazy because I, I both hear that, no, it was a bad game. And then, no, it was actually really good. <laughs> but uh, and then the, the, the creator's like, there will never be a Days Gone 2. <laughs> Ever. I uh, just talking about Astro Bot. It's uh, it, it, it's it's a cute character. It's a cute game. It it has brand recognition. It, it actually uses the Sony branding mm-hmm. to its advantage, and I, it, everything about it. It's like <laughs> they, I think this is what people that own a PlayStation were kind of waiting for, especially in this console generation. It's like the, the headlines <laughs> I see for it is like literally this is the reason to own a PlayStation right now. Like. <laughs> Congratulations. The PS5 now has two games. <laughs> Astrobot and Demon Souls. <laughs> and maybe some uh third thing. It's crazy too that uh for those that don't know, Astrobot uh its original release was basically a tech demo for just the dual sense controller and like a Sony's history. Like that came out uh on release with the PS5. Uh, Astro's Playroom. Yeah. Yeah, it's a... Uh, th- th- that is such a, like, a fate of irony sort of thing where it's like, here's this game that we put so much into, like, so much into, and it, and it's happened twice now with uh, Helldivers and then Astrobot, and then here's this thing that was being incubated for eight years. And it's like, both of these games just did phenomenally, and they're not... They're not anywhere on the scale that Concord was supposed to be on. Uh, I think it's just ironic that you could put so much stock into a project and it seemed like uh, internally at Sony they, they were just all in on this. I don't think they were expecting anything from a game like Helldivers 2, but then here we are. And then uh, Concord itself was supposed to just be like the golden child for a little bit until Bungie actually started stepping in and started helping with these life service projects and again <laughs> are uh are bungee gonna be the new uh what is it sweet baby mm. <laughs> no, no, no. What, i mean well they can't manage themselves clearly well <clears throat> I, I mean i guess if you if you want to talk about consulting <laughs> uh it, it's just crazy that if you let them seep in your game is going to in most cases your game, well, no, not not anything too too crazy, but it's just like your game is going to be changed dramatically or deviate dramatically from what you envision. I sent you that picture the other day about uh, the Discord uh, for Concord yeah. and the developer that initially had plans to make a character that was in the game. I think it was Amari, the the chick that has the armor. Uh, but you see that the you, you can see the deviation clearly from that image. Uh, Dear listeners, now on Spotify. Hell yeah. Dear listeners on Spotify, and I can't show you this, obviously, but uh, on Concord's Discord. Sorry that I was looking at some massive budgets. Anyway, the, yes, Amari. <laughs> Original design from six years ago. Uh, <clears throat> so the character, it, it looks it looks nice. The, apparently the in-game lore is that the character is a super soldier of sorts and she has some prototype armor. So in Concord, the the finished rendition, which is supposed to be kind of like 80s themed or 80s aesthetic in a way uh, for the character designs. You can see like, yeah, the, the armor does look prototyped, but the initial sketches of Amari actually looked pretty good and it showed off pretty well that like this character does... She she looks like she's in a suit of armor. She looks like like a tank. And then, for the record, to describe it for dear viewer listeners, uh, long ponytail, uh, vibrant green armor, uh, big old minigun chain gun, 
and kind of looks like uh <laughs> like dark like pants are also part of like the combat suit sorta and then to the new design where it's this extremely faded green in huge giant bulky armor like it's the same design with a helmet in a, in addition and they just made it bigger way bigger like she uh she looks like a space like, marine like like actual tank big she, yeah she looks like she was out of 40k <laughs> that's a good way to put it actually yeah so uh, you know just look at it like an overwatch character wearing armor uh like one of the females wearing armor <laughs> and just upscale that to just 40k and there you go i i will link this in the youtube portion Spotify listeners, I don't say uh, good luck to you. Anyway, the, um, <laughs> it, but th- that's just kind of weird. Like sweet baby, you can get consulting from, and then your character will deviate so far from the, the vision. And it's just like, here, here's the end result of that. And it, somehow this happened for every character, every character this happened to. It's funny that, uh, before all this, like I never even heard of sweet baby. Uh, like they just popped up out of nowhere. <laughs> Well, because it's been going on for like the past two years. It's just that there's a lot of kickback now mm. because it's like, dude, okay, Saints Row, whatever. Two, four, five, eight times now. All right. Now, okay. Now we have to talk. Why is this yeah. happening? Why, why does this keep <laughs> happening? And well, this just adds to the list. And now we're once again going to be in another uh, release season come holidays. So then people are going to be worried about like, okay, now, now what's going to happen? Biggest release that we have right now currently is uh, Space Marine 2. And that, for the most part, has been reviewed positively aside from uh, a few instances of just like, well, the early access. I don't think you guys should be doing that. Uh, Epic Games being uh, a part of it in order to actually do cross play with all platforms yeah yeah i saw that you have to uh have an account so people are are given kickback like that but it's like (laughs) it was the lesser of two evils because the alternative is well this is going to be an epic games exclusive and we know how those go you know a year down the line and then it comes to steam and then it either it sinks to the bottom because people don't care anymore or unless you're a ghost of tsushima And then you arrive like four years (laughs) after the fact. And then also say, hey, you have to have an account. So it's it's going to come at you. It's just uh, dependent on are they taking that deal or no? And well, we want cross play. Okay, well, uh, this this is what we got to do to make this happen. Sorry. But for the most part, the game, uh, it's been doing good. I, I don't subscribe to the idea that any time a game is reviewed negatively, especially the first few days of launch, it is it always happens. It doesn't matter what game you are, who you are. Your game will get a lot of negative reviews off rip because it's a day one launch. Usually day one launches don't go the way you think it's going to, bud. So people rightfully are going to be angry that they can't access the services, maybe because there's a queue, maybe because the game doesn't fucking work. Uh... This it's it's the way it goes. But I don't subscribe to the idea that any time somebody reviews your game as negative, that is review bombing. So you mean to tell me that if the game was reviewed absolutely extraordinarily well, that that's not a review bomb? But the fact that I put something out there that is negative for me and my purchase cases, sorry, my purchase case, that is reviewed as review bombing. I, I don't really get that. I don't. I don't. I don't like that terminology. I think that's it's just kind of seedy because it invalidates <laughs> well, what people are saying about you your can, game. You can look at Dustborn, uh, which I, I had to double check what this was. Uh, somebody was uh, over on my Discord was saying, "Oh, can you play this? Can you stream this? Like, it'd be really funny if you did." And I was like, "Wait, what was this game?" And, and it's the quote unquote woke. Yeah. rock band adventure thing game where you 
have the prompt to call a police officer racist. Yeah. And then the music isn't that good. Uh, yeah, that got some. But well, that's getting positively that got, yeah, reviewed. That bumped. Got positively <laughs> review bumped. <laughs> because it was uh, it was it was funded by the German government. Yep. Discuss this <laughs> on episode eighteen. Drop pod now on Spotify. Uh, it, it's. It's not doing well in terms of player numbers, but it did do well in terms of reviews, and that's kind of a uh, a, a, a weird thing to go through. Well, they were ironic, is the thing. <laughs> the um, I, I talked about like you you write these characters that are so unlikable that the person that you write into the game that you are meant to not like is more likable than the characters you're you're playing as because <laughs> that character that you're not meant to like is more relatable to you. Uh. I don't, I, man, talked about this one, episode 17, drop pod now on Spotify. I talked about this once that uh, it, it sucks when you work on a project like Dustborn, for instance, where people are, are going to give you flack for it and you're going to melt down because it's like, dude, I, I spent so much time on this. I thought this was going to be like a, a, you know, home run. And uh, people are like, no, th- th- this is, uh, this looks like a tax write off actually. Or, comma, this looks like one of those games that you just put on your CV, your resume, so that when you go to work for an actual company, a legitimate business, you can at least show them, like, oh, yeah, I worked on a game once. Heard of Dustborn? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Uh, Just to clarify, by the way, uh, shout outs to Barlow uh, over my Discord for uh, throwing this at me. Uh, for Dustborn, quote, developers received financial support from the Norwegian Film Institute. Yes. Uh, under the scheme development of games after artistic assessment. Dustborn was developed uh, using the Unity engine and the team wrote their custom shaders to accomplish the comic book inspired look. That's an additional part. There you go. Yep. The first uh, instance of a government funded game and everybody was really kicking back on that. Um <laughs> Well, aside from China. Aside from China. Is that because <laughs> one of the characters is black, I wonder? Couldn't tell you. Of course you can. Oh, I just meant uh, Chinese government funded games. I oh, know that, that would be Tencent. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, uh, that takes care of the sweet. Uh, okay. I'm going to I'm going to clarify something because we're kind of enter we, we enter into dangerous territory. For those of you that have never seen me before, I am black, by the way. Well, mixed. Oh my god! What? 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 You didn't tell me. <laughs> you didn't tell me. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> I am a uh, I'm a person of mixed ethnicity, uh, biracial, as they call me, back in the hood in which I dwelled. Lead. Uh, the day walker as they've been calling me <laughs> around these parts uh, I walk into a room and they go oh he's black and then I speak and then they're like uh, I think um, <laughs> we enter dangerous territory when we talk about sweet baby ink because if you bring sweet baby ink up there's a lot of dissenters that will just call you out on being either misogynistic and or racist depending on who you are uh, I don't want people to think that we talk about these games and we're like, oh, well, this is bad because uh, you try to be inclusive. No. The, I, I like highlighting the drastic changes in game dev because it is a hobby of mine as of late to uh, do some game dev stuff. I've been working with Unity. I've been working with C. I've been working with Godot. I, uh, I like learning about the stuff. And when I'm watching people's workflow... And then Sweet Baby Ink gets involved in that. I'm like, okay, here was the initial vision. Here's how the game released. And I'm just like, oh, okay, well, it's, I wonder what would have happened if you stuck to your your, your, your core vision of it. Um, game like uh, Flintlock, I don't think Flintlock would have done well, but let's use them as an example. But Flintlock uh, was meant to release a lot different than how it did. Reminder, Flintlock was uh, the game that was showcased at Jeff Keighley's summer 
what do I call it? The Summer Super Slam Game Jam. Super Slam. I'll go with the first one. Why not? But it marketed <laughs> itself as the as a. Uh, I think it was Souls Born. That's how they termed it. It was either Souls Like or Souls Born. Who cares? Either way, that was the tagline on their huge trailer. They, they spent however much money they needed to spend to get that on Jeff Keighley's show. And they described themselves as a Soulsborne. The game was supposed to release a lot different uh, in terms of its character designs, but then it was a uh, reminder, Austin, that when I had talked about this on the first episode you had appeared in this season. Oh, episode 20. Correct. 21. The, and similar songs on Amazon. <laughs> Shut up, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa! Shut up! <laughs> I was expecting a, a, a third host. <laughs> she actually started playing music. <laughs> <laughs> Were you confused? Oh my god. I, I thought that was mine. always confused. I thought that was mine for a moment. I had turned around. <laughs> uh, she likes to speak up at random I, I oh my god I can't imagine how I even said the thing that I just said and she took that as oh is that me is it my time <laughs> anyway Flintlock was supposed to release differently it, it just didn't the main character was supposed to be um, a different woman they got replaced by another woman and then reminder, when you were on episode 20, I had talked about, well, uh, you see Sweet Baby Ink was involved with this game. And uh, when asked if Sweet Baby Ink was involved with this game, the developer said no, or the, rather the CEO of the company had said no, whatever. And then you play through the game, you get to the credits. It's like Sweet Baby Ink is involved in the credits. And then people are like, uh, hello? And it's been, they forgot to remove us. That's all. I, 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 it might have been. But it has gotten to the point where people have made a Steam group dedicated to, like, hey, if Sweet Baby Inc. is involved, yeah. we're, just gonna, we're, we're gonna put these guys on the list. So, there it is. It comes yeah, I was, I, I was, I was seeing that, and then the person who, uh, who made the curation group uh, was... Well, well, Sweet Baby were crying on Twitter, and then they cried to like Steam support saying, no, no, they can't do this. Stop them. Ban them. <laughs> Trying to get them banned off the platform. Ban them. That doesn't help anything. No. No. Uh, I don't know how necessary a, a group like this is, but I mean, it, if for archival reasons alone, it's like, yeah, okay, whatever. But I, I don't know how much that would actually help your cause. It, it's just that it's worrying because for the developer, it's like, dude, I, I just wanted some consulting on like how to like actually rate this character. I don't I don't know Jack about this culture. Like I just they're they're in the game. I, I was told to draw this character, they're in the game. Um you know, you, you just want to consult on that. And most people do have good intentions about these sort of things. It's not like Blizzard esque, like we're including you so we can profit. No, we are doing this because we don't know about the culture in most cases. Uh, we would like some help on like, what do we do? Like, uh, is it normal for the Latino character to do X, Y, and Z? I don't know. All right, let's, let's consult somebody. Uh, what kind of hairstyle should they have? It, literally that. <laughs> let's uh, have the same three <laughs> in every game. And they're just variations of Afros. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, Classic. <laughs> The idea is, though, when we're making these games and it's like, OK, well, I I, I don't want to be seen as like rude or, or crude towards the culture that I put in the game. All right. We're going to consult people on this. It turns into a thing of like. Uh, you guys did this with good intent. However, the company that you chose to be a part of this project of a very peculiar way of doing things and every game that they've been a part of aside from the three that they hold atop their totem pole have basically died lack of a better term uh people are just pushing back and so far it's like dude if i see sweet baby because involved i'm already assuming that this game isn't going to do well 
I'd, I'd, I'd rather it not even be like that. Consulting firms have been a thing for a while, but it's just this particular one. This particular one gets a lot of flack for the way that they've been a part of projects. And if Concord is anything to go by, aside from the terrible marketing, aside from the gameplay, which I didn't even talk about yet, I actually, as an aside, I actually liked the gameplay showcase. It didn't look too interesting from the trailer that they showed. By the way, the trailer that they curated all of these gameplay snippets of as like, this is the best that we can show you for this game. <laughs> it didn't look too interesting, but what it did remind me of was Destiny. It reminded me of Halo because a lot of the animation sets were from Destiny. Mm. Uh. So when I saw the the, the hand can that you know the guy with the revolver in the gameplay yeah. trailer or the guy that does the the rolling animation you're like that looks like destiny so i thought in my mind at least like oh this might just do well because it has the bungee dna aesthetic the game is floaty it's weighty in terms of its combat so i was like okay well maybe a lot of the destiny or halo heads are going to be really appreciative of a game like this nobody was talking about it though because the game just looked bland you're in this huge sprawling universe and what you're showing me is these brutalist designs and architecture that just doesn't it doesn't scream alien to me it doesn't scream like oh that this is like a collective of people that we have no it's like you have the military base map and then you have the city map and it's like dude i have seen these in other games you mean to tell me out of like the billions of planets and you're trying to do this guardians of the galaxy thing that you guys can come up with some more I guess alien aesthetic designs. Uh, Everybody really just wants to be the next Guardians of the Galaxy. It, it seems like it. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I, I at least I thought the gameplay was actually pretty nice as a Destiny player. So when I saw that these animations were in the game and that this game was being developed by Destiny or ex Bungie employees. I was like, OK, no, they're, they're wearing these animations pretty heavily. They want you to know, like, no, we were here. This is what we are. People say often, oh, well, if you don't like this game, just make your own. Oh, here it is. <laughs> and uh, th this game. It's, that's so easy. That's such an easy argument. It really is. Oh, well, you, you just make your own game. Okay. Okay, <laughs> get funding for it. Uh, advertising. Like, I can make it, but... <laughs> um. At the end of the day, I just think that for Concord's sake, it, it's going to be on this like weird like life support thing. I'm surprised that Sony even pulled it off the shelf. I'm actually surprised. I thought I'm surprised that they did it so early because everybody I could have foreseen a I, I could have foreseen a like holiday winter like at that point they go free to play maybe. Yep. But yeah, it, it, so, so, so fast. Uh, and something funny, I don't know if you heard about this, but people were rushing to get achievements in that game. Yeah. So you'd have people getting the matches and then just off. one team was jumping off yeah. cliffs, committing seppuku side. <laughs> <laughs> and just taking turns to get all the achievements and trophies. We, we this is incredible. knew this game was going to have trouble. <laughs> We knew that this game at some point was either going to go free to play or it was going to get shut down. A lot of us had it pegged, myself included, for a year that it would get shut down. That game did not make it past two weeks. People are barely yeah. giving it that it made it past two weeks. That is very generous. I have never oh, seen... Remind <laughs> hmm. Reminder as well, uh, we were talking about this earlier in the week too, but the secret level... Uh, like show that was going to come out uh, that is still going to come out. There will be a Concord episode still released because I think we were wondering that last week, but yes, that it still will come out despite the game being fucking dead. It's like, it's going to release for an audience that it doesn't exist for. It's going to end up as lost media, this game. And it's like the only archival stuff we have. It already, it already is. Or the people it that recorded is. their, you know, their gameplay, or they they put up their Twitch fonts or whatever, and then you have this this secret level episode, 
but it's like god knows how much goes into making one of those episodes and it's like all right well got it got to release it so like what, what else are we gonna do we already made it it's already produced and additionally too uh as you said lost media uh you can look up on ebay right now but there are physical copies of concord selling for i i saw one person mention i didn't look myself but uh upwards of twenty five thousand dollars nah and it just fucking failed nah like shit you can go take that to the same landfill as et i guess <laughs> out in the desert um a new record for the Bungie-esque, uh, Destiny-esque uh, Sony segment. 50 minutes. Uh, congrats. <laughs> Take a bow. I swear we won't talk about Concord next week, maybe. Let's hope not. <laughs> but this is, this is the big finale to Concord. <laughs> it was on my bingo card. I've been doing this as of late. I'm just like, alright, let's see, let's see if we checkbox something right here gonna, yeah you want to read off that bingo card <laughs> uh, okay this is my drop pod now on spotify bingo card sorry i was looking at every time i have to scroll up in our chat i, I have to look at some pretty massive budgets <laughs> yep <laughs> anyway i did not finish this just yet so it's like all right i, I need to find something that was going to console you I see what you wanted to fill into these spaces console me am i crying console you uh but basically the free squares that somebody will say drop pod which i just did uh sony or microsoft <laughs> would be mentioned my bird chirp from my clock would be visibly audio maybe not so I've, I've done a lot with audio processing in the past few days I, I don't think you guys would notice it this week if you notice it this week sound off unless you're on spotify gate me again gate me again i dare you <laughs> 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 that evil's not on me gate me again <laughs> it ain't happening this week but we, we we got we got production value on this one uh, hell jump. Actually, actually, cons <laughs> considering you're about to read off the bingo card, can you just mark all of these technically? <laughs> <laughs> we'll start from the top. Destiny 2 slash Bungie mention. All right, mark that one up. He just says, uh, mark that one. Drop pod. <laughs> mark that one. Your mother. Wait, we're not marking that one. Don't, don't do that to me. Don't put that evil on me. I said it <laughs> as an aside to th this card criticism of gaming journalism or reviews yeah i'll give you that one mention of cringe from past episode i don't think we did that just yet we did that before we did that before the episode even aired uh mouth <laughs> breathing i don't know I, I guess we'll find out in post uh anime mention not just yet 343 mentioned not just yet hell jumper server or people within the server mentioned not just yet did mention Barlow, but that's your that's your community. Actually, I would say in a roundabout way, uh, you did mention somebody at the start. <laughs> in a very roundabout way. Hmm. Moving on. Criticism of a recent video game. Yeah, go ahead. Malo mentioned Concord sucks <laughs> and it's good that it's dead. <laughs> Malo mentions from soft. I will not give you that one just yet. Did mention Bloodborne, but that was that wasn't anything. I didn't say I wasn't talking about Bloodborne. Oh, but oh, but he knows. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Let's talk about that hunter game in <laughs> with the werewolves <laughs> that Sony doesn't think exists. Oh shit! Wait, <laughs> forget the bingo card. Even though that was basically it, forget the bingo card. <laughs> talk talk to you about this earlier too, about how. Uh, Sony just, uh, what was it? The CFO uh, put out a statement in an interview saying, man, I wish we had more like IPs that we nurtured and fostered like from the beginning, like more Sony IPs, original IPs. And then just a list of like 20 plus games of things that they haven't touched in like over a decade. <laughs> I, said I would slap that guy. I said I would actually uh, uh, 
kill for like some of these to come back. Like a, a, yeah, we were talking about uh, so calm. A human's life would be taken for, for one of these IPs to come back. <laughs> uh, like yeah, I, I would love to see um, like so calm because that that was like uh, that was Sony's like internal Ghost Recon. Like we have that. It's ours. It's here. Ghost Recon was every console, but it's like, you want the good one? We have that on PlayStation. Um, things like Ico, I think, would be kind of cool to see again. Siphon I filter. Pronounced Ico. <laughs> Your mother. <laughs> go ahead and sign that one off. I'll give you that. There one. you go. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Siphon <Brazinga>. filter. <laughs> <laughs> Siphon Filter was one of my favorite games on the Gen 1 PS1 era. Uh, yeah, I've I've seen like the animations for it. And, like it, it looks cool. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how it plays, but everybody I, I hear mention it, they're like, that game fucked sure on the PlayStation 1. Medieval would kill a man for that game. Well, they, brought, well, they brought that back for a remake remaster. I think it was a remaster, yeah. Well, depending on how you look at it. No. Well, no, eh. no, eh. no, you know, no, if the dead space, uh, one remake is a remake, then medieval was a remake. Cause dead space one remake played mostly the exact same minus a few things. Medieval played mostly the exact same, but for a few new things. You have people literally emulating your game for this to come out. Bloodborne. We would literally, we, we, in fact, we have been. We have been asking since this game has been out. Like this should be, this should be present on other systems, at least PC. So much so that people are now almost able to play the the, the fucking thing rather than you guys would have done this already. People would have paid you dividends to play this on PC, and somehow you guys still have not done so. It's crazy looking at that development uh, because. A little over a month ago, I remember like <laughs> mentioning to everybody, but a little over a month ago, everybody was pogging out of their fucking mind because uh, and this is all via the Shad PS4 emulator. But people were like amazed that the game booted to the title menu in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> and then like a couple of weeks later or maybe no like within a week i would say uh they booted it to the character creation screen and now we're at the point where people are beating the game in full it still has a lot of issues um i think they still have a memory leak problem that's going on or they just fixed it two days ago i don't recall but uh, my original like assumption was that Bloodborne on PC would be playable by the end of the year. But at this point now, I would say you could possibly like play it without too many issues within the next like month and a half, two months or so. When does Sony step in? Like, you think? <sighs> well, they can't because it's emulation. What's that matter? It matters plenty, apparently. The, the only thing that they could step in with is just piracy. But if you have people dumping their own files, you, you know, some people anyway, mm. uh, dumping their own files to, you know, play Bloodborne, then, you know, that's one thing. I don't know. Like, I could see it maybe happening like at the well. No, because there's so many articles out now that people just keep saying, oh, Bloodborne on PC and then not like saying anything else about it. And it's like, I know what you're talking about. You're when you say bloodborne on PC, you're talking about emulation of bloodborne on PC, not literally a PC port of bloodborne. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you have, uh, like, like with, uh, the, was it a uh, bloodborne cart, uh, had to be renamed and everything thing that belonged to the bloodborne IP had to be changed when uh, that released and it was like last minute. Yeah. But granted, like it had been worked on for the longest time, but 
it especially gained the traction that, oh, shit, this is about to release. No, I hadn't heard about this. Like Bloodborne card is actually real. And it's Sony stepped in and said, no, cease and desist. So uh, all the uh, developer uh, Bunlith did was just change all of the like assets up and the names up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they did. They just they're all very the dis- assets. Yeah, they're very distinctive <laughs> bits in Bob's. Um, and uh, what to remember too is that it's it was releasing for free, completely for free. Um, and it's on Steam. It originally released on uh, Itch.io. And of course, you know, you can... Uh, you can, you know, pay money for whatever projects uh, or whatever actually, thing that you're downloading yeah, if it's, it's free. Itch.io, actually. I hear both ways. Frick you. And then it came to PC, or sorry, <laughs> then it came to Steam. Uh, I think a, a couple of weeks later, because uh, Valve was taking forever to, like, have the game up and downloadable. But anyway, to long story short, uh, I think with as big as it is now, if Sony doesn't step in, which I don't think there's much of a leg that they can stand on because it's just general PlayStation emulation development, like the main development is making the emulator work properly. You just have a ton of fucking people working on Bloodborne emulation in particular. And that's just with getting like the game itself running but the overall goal for uh the chad ps4 emulation project is of course having everything being emulatable not just bloodborne that just happens to be the main focus for most people right now but i i think as of this point they probably won't step in they're working on a destiny one also they 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 were able to actually get the servers up for that game, just reminder that that's all online. Oh, the servers up. Yep. So th- I hadn't heard that. Okay, that gives me uh, definite hope. Not that it. I assumed it wouldn't eventually, but uh, for like actual Bloodborne online on PC. Yeah, well, we'll see. I, I don't know what hoops they have to jump through to get uh, Destiny going. Right now, they <laughs> when it, when I was checking into it, uh, one of the destinations looked playable uh it obviously you crash a lot but they were able to have another player on the same destination so i think we're, we're almost in there and whatever's happening with bloodborne that that seems like that one's progressing at like mox eight <laughs> yeah it's, it's just there, there are new builds if you go uh to depending on who you ask github or jithub <laughs> i don't know um there are like bi hourly builds being uploaded. Some Bloodborne specific, some just overall development. Uh, and then, like, th- those are just the prototype builds. The like actual build, I think, uh, or like the most stable version is like two weeks prior, last I checked, a few days ago. 